This is a video about how I tried to make my very own automatic refill filament system and how it failed miserably. I've been on a seemingly endless journey to try and find a way for my printer to automatically swap to the next spool after the first one runs out. I just want a clean, smooth transition. One spool finishes, the next one starts with no downtime in the middle. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, turns out, it's not. Now the only company that I know of that has actually managed to do this properly is Infinity Flow with the S1. But they don't ship out of the US or Canada and I have absolutely no idea when they even will. Now yes, there is technology like the AMS from Bamboo Lab that has their auto refill feature, which is really the only reason I bought it. But after using it for a few days, I realized that it kind of sucks. Primarily because it doesn't operate with a purge tower and it has no way to repressurize the nozzle, remove those annoying blobs, or just make a clean print. It's really just a roll of the dice as to whether or not the refill is going to do its thing on an outside wall or on the infill. So now I'm basically left with a really overpriced filament heater. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't actually heat the filament while you're printing with it. Now I'm left with a really, really overpriced spool holder. <laughs> Enter the Wise Pro Auto Refill Filament Buffer, or WARFB. This thing claims to load the next spool completely autonomously right behind the previous one when it runs out. There's no pause, there's no purge tower, it just feeds in seamlessly straight behind the first one. Now it kind of does. Oh, it's doing something. But it also kind of doesn't. Printer's pause because it's run out of filament. <sighs> In fact, the best thing it does is fall apart and glitch out. This bearing wants to pop out again. This thing just popped out again. Two spools all trying to go into the same tube. Who is Wise Pro? Who knows? I bought mine off their website. It cost me about 80 Australian dollars. But from the moment I opened the box, I had this sinking feeling in my stomach. Could it possibly have been because a few days earlier I had watched the only review on this product and the guy basically said, oh, I don't recommend it at all, at all, at all. I won't even put a link in the description. That's how bad it is. But that didn't stop me and I bought it anyway and all the problems that came along with it. <laughs> Problem number one, how on earth are you meant to mount this thing? Now it comes with this little strap that's really helpful on a P1S, not, and I didn't want to use sticky tape or glue or any type of adhesive because I wanted this thing to be portable and usable on any of my other printers when I needed it. So I had to come up with a mounting system somehow. But before I did that, I had one very important thing to do. I had to see if it even worked. So I did a few comparison prints using the Bamboo AMS2 Pro versus the Wise Pro Filament Buffer. For the first test, I used two black spools that were exactly the same all the way down to the batch number to see if you could get that purely seamless transition. And as expected, the AMS did the refill on an outside wall and left this lovely hole. But when I had a look at the print that was done with the Wise Pro, it actually looked really, really good. It was perfectly seamless. There was not one blemish. I couldn't even tell where it happened. So then I tried two different colors and this time the AMS actually did the refill on the infill, which is why it came out looking really nice. But again, the Wise Pro was flawless. And at this point, I was actually pretty excited because I was like, maybe this thing works. So I quickly whipped up a temporary mount in Blender, put it on top of my P1S and used my filament dryer as the spool holder. And this is where everything started to get very frustrating. Trying to get two spools positioned properly was an absolute nightmare. I eventually jammed two Bowden tubes into the buffer and forced it to work. Kinda. But even then, trying to load the filament was a nightmare because you basically needed an extra pair of hands to be able to do it properly. The difficult part is to try and put an amount of pressure on it to force it in and actually go in. And if there was a snag or tangle in the filament, game over. There's also no label on the top cover to show you which inlet is primary and which one is the backup. So naturally, I got it back to front and spent a lot of time trying to figure out why nothing was feeding properly. Ah. And once I had that figured out, I also realized that there's no way to know if you've actually loaded the backup spool properly. There's no indicator light, there's nothing. So when I thought I had loaded the backup spool, when it came to actually needing to use it, the whole print failed. Epic fail! Then it started to glitch out completely and thought the backup input was the primary input, meaning it tried to force the filament into a tube that was already full, jamming everything. And throughout this entire process, the bearings were trying to pop out every five seconds because they weren't being held down by anything. 
The longer the print went on, the more they crept up and up and up until they eventually popped out. And when they popped out, there was no way to feed the filament and the print failed. Oh my lord. And all of this happened in one day. One day. If whoever made this thing had only tested it for 24 hours, they would have found every single problem that I did. And no, this is not user error, as everyone always says. It's not just me. Remember that guy who did... Remember... Remember... <laughs> Remember that guy? <laughs> I think I've lost the plot. All these same problems happened to him as well. But because I really, really, really wanted this thing to work because I have no other option, I decided to come up with some fixes myself. But when I was making these fixes, I just printed the parts on my own machines. If you wanted to take them up a notch, you could get them made through PCBWay, today's sponsor, as they offer a huge range of 3D printing options. In a moment, I'm gonna be showing you the new top cover I made to stop the bearings from popping out. Although printing this with regular PETG is probably gonna be fun, you could always upgrade it to a stronger material to make it last forever, or just to make it look cool. All you need to do is upload your file, choose your material, and you get your quote instantly. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check them out. And now it's time to get back to the video. The first thing I did was design a brand new top cover to stop those bearings from popping out whenever they wanted. I installed it and problem solved. Great, now there's five billion to go. <laughs> Next up, I needed a mounting system that worked across all of my printers and could hold the buffer, two spools and a snag cutter. After a few days of testing different spool holders, I came up with the first prototype. And to keep in the spirit of weirdly named automatic filament loading systems like the enraged rabbit carrot feeder, I would like to introduce to you the filament auto reloader thing. A fully 3D printed spool holder other than the bearings with an automatic snag cutter hooked up to an auto refill filament buffer sitting on a spool. I personally thought this prototype looked pretty cool, but I ran into my first problem straight away. Turns out I couldn't feed the filament through as the angle was far too sharp. Great start, Martin. So I went back to Blender to see if I could raise the mounting bracket, but then I realized that if I did this, the bracket became too flexible and the cutter would most likely pop out. Then I realized that if I just increased the length of the Bowden tubes, problem solved. <laughs> it lives. And I could have done this in the beginning, <laughs> but I didn't. So now I got the feeding issue fixed, it was now time to figure out if the auto refill system even worked. And it worked! Okay, there we go. Now it's feeding in the second spool. So after trying this a few times and having great success, I thought, this is amazing. I had finally fixed it. But then I realized I hadn't. Because for some reason I started running into that same issue as before where the device thought the backup input was the primary and everything got jammed and all the prints got ruined. Anyway, I decided to see if the snag cutter even worked and if it did, I would go back to that problem. So I tried it and it didn't. Now this snag cutter is actually called the AMS Saver and it wasn't made by me at all. All I did was change the bracket and mount it to my spool holder. Now I was using a spool that I had tangled on purpose to see what would happen when it actually did get stuck. And every time it did, the Wise Pro would do a little spin for about three seconds and then the whole print would fail. I thought maybe it was because the spring on the saver was still a bit too strong, so I installed the lightest spring that I could and it still wouldn't work. Eventually, I figured out that this wasn't a problem with the actual AMS saver, but a problem with the really low powered motors that were on the Wise Pro buffer. And when I tested the saver, when it was connected directly to the extruder, it worked perfectly. So it was at this point I realized that my magical fart was probably never going to work. And now we are here. Will I continue to try and use it? Maybe. When it does work, it works really, really well. And with the new top cover that I designed, it means those bearings aren't gonna fall out and it's gonna make it a little bit more reliable. But you're probably still gonna face the same issue that I did where it just can't figure out which input to use as the primary or the backup. And that means that it's probably only good for two spools max. I wouldn't try and put anything more than that in there. Okay, so throughout this entire video, I've been trying to contact Wise Pro about all the issues that I'm facing. And up until now, they have just been ghosting me. But they have finally responded. So I took the chance to ask them some questions and provide some feedback. And it has in turn changed my overall outlook on this product. So basically to summarize, they are aware of the bearing issue where it just pops 
out all the time and they're working on a new top cover to fix that, which I've already done for them. And they're also going to be adding in three selectable timing options for when the next spool kicks in. And they're also working on a snag cutter and they told me that the next version should be available in about a month's time. So in September 2025, we should have version number two. However, I told them about the feeding issues that I've had that basically make the Wise Pro unusable after two spools, and they said that they're gonna pass this on to their engineers. So it's good that they're listening to their customers, and it's really good that they actually got back to me because I had a whole segment that I've since deleted. <laughs> because if they're willing to communicate and fix the issues with their product, then that's a big tick from me. So would I recommend buying one of these things? <laughs> Hmm, if you have no other option like me, then sure. But you will need to download the top cover that I made to stop the bearings from popping out, and you can only use it with two spools, so it's up to you. Now, will all these issues be fixed in the next version? I'm not sure, but they said they'd send me out a product to test out and make a video on, so we'll see how that goes. So if you're in the US or Canada, do yourself a favor and get an Infinity Flow S1. And if you can wait, they're gonna be releasing a new version soon that has a whole bunch of really awesome upgrades that is gonna make this the absolute goat of auto refilling systems throughout the whole world. I'm gonna leave a link to all the STLs that I've used in this video in the description below. Hope this video has helped and thanks for watching. Bye.